In machine learning and data science, most of the tools boil down in the end to two simple steps. First, write out a probability model. Second, fit the model from data. Other ways of saying fit the model are train the model, learn from data, or estimate the model's parameters. There's one standard fitting procedure, the simplest, most obvious thing we can think of. It's so natural that many of you have used it already, and it's so powerful that it's the basis for training neural networks. And this is what we'll be studying in this part of the course. Perhaps more importantly, we'll also learn how to invent probability models. So what exactly do I mean by a probability model? Let's look at two examples. The first is a model for office expense claims by MPs in the UK Parliament. Just a quick note, whenever I do data science in these videos, you can check out the code behind it. The code is all stored in Jupyter Notebooks and they're linked to from the course website. Now back to the data. I've plotted a histogram of claim amounts. More specifically, I've put the log of the claim amount on the x-axis because otherwise the distribution of the many small amounts would be completely swamped by the few big claims. When you have a nice rich data set plotted, it opens the door to all sorts of questions. Looking at this, my eye is drawn to what looks like a hump at around 2.8, which corresponds to about 630 pounds. I'd want to know, is there really a hump? Can I pinpoint its exact location? Why is the hump there? What sorts of expense claims belong to the hump? Or could I classify an expense claim according to how likely it is to be one of the part of the hump? If I can do this, then I could begin to understand what that hump consists of. The way to answer all of these questions is to invent a probability model and fit it to the data. So what is a probability model? Well, it's something like this. A probability model is basically a piece of code with random numbers inside. This code has three random numbers. The job of this code is to simulate an expense claim amount. I've run it lots of times to produce a simulated version of the expense claim data set. I've plotted a histogram of the output. My model definitely has the hump because of how I designed the code. It's not a perfect model because I can see by eye that the data is more clumpy than what my model produced, but it's a start and it can definitely help with classifying claims. We'll see that in a later video. This code has some magic numbers in it. Fitting the model means tuning those parameters to fit the data. We'll see how to do it for simple models in the next video. And we'll come back to this particular model after we've learnt some more maths. OK, on to another model, this one for climate change. In this plot, the dots show monthly average temperatures measured at a weather station in Cambridge, and the grey line shows a fitted model. The model I've used here has a sinusoid plus a long-term trend. Crucially, the model has one more ingredient. It includes a model term for noise. The whole point of a probability model is that it can describe noisy data. If you're a physicist like Newton or Einstein, you want nice, beautiful equations that you can solve exactly. But if you're a data scientist, you're working with noisy data, and so you need a model that can talk about noise. We need to model the noise to understand the significance of what we see. Here, for example, we might estimate that noise of plus or minus more than a few degrees centigrade is unlikely. If there's a reading inside that range, the fitting procedure says, oh, it's just noise, ignore it. If there's a more extreme reading, the fitting procedure says, hey, something's going on. If there's a sustained divergence in a single direction, let's say the temperatures in the last decade are consistently higher than what the model predicts, then we can't describe it as noise. What happens then is we as modelers have to say, hold on, that's not how noise is meant to behave. There must be something wrong with my model and we'll go away and invent a better model. So when we look at a plot like this, we don't just see data points. This is what we see. We put on our data scientist goggles 
And what we actually see is a cloud of all the counterfactual possibilities of what the data might have been. The next video will go into the model fitting procedure. The aim of the whole of this course is to give you the tools you need to invent your own probability models for whatever data set you might be working with.